Hey, what's going on people? Glenn and Cameron here again. I was not going to do a video today. Nope. Wasn't on the schedule. Wasn't going to do one. Actually, I've been ripping around. I have so many things to do. Just got finished writing. Crack open my laptop. Go to Facebook. And I am seeing not one, not two, but several posts from people saying eBay closed their account today. I want you to think about that. What is today? Looking at my watch, it's October 29th. S mere weeks before Christmas. And eBay is rifting, which is reduction in force sellers. They did it this summer. They did it a few weeks ago. They're doing it again. eBay is cleaning house. Now, some of the people who were talking, I was actually surprised I was literally surprised. These are some folks who are heavy hitters. Some folks make all them. I'm not mentioning any names because, you know, the one guy I know met him at a conference. Good dude. Hard worker. Does what he needs to do. And uh, he made some changes, fortunately, for his business where he uh, shifted away from eBay. But I want you to understand this. This is part of a plan. This is this isn't the end. How many times have I been wrong on this? Those of you who've been watching the video since about this eBay, thing, how many times have I been wrong? They're going to do it again. Yes, again. This is going to continue on. I'm going to give you some theory, just an educated guess. With e commerce being what it is right now, it is really hard. For the small seller that's not trying to grow. Now listen to what I said. It's really hard for the small seller that is not trying to grow their business. If you're small, and I mean if you just started six months ago on eBay and you're trying to grow your business aggressively, vigorously, you might be able to weather the storm. Bluntly put, eBay doesn't need small sellers anymore. Small sellers are what built eBay, but that was back then and this is now. They're going for larger enterprises, more efficient enterprises, people who have a warehouse, people who have volume. And even that, you would be boo-boo the fool to only have eBay as your main driver or as a large social income. You'd be boo boo the fool because at any time they can eh, cut the spigot off, your cash flow is gone. I said years ago, you need multiple channels to sell. You have to have them. They're mandatory. They're not optional. If you're a reseller, whatever you may be doing, storage auctions, whatever, and you're selling on eBay, you're selling on Amazon, investigate Etsy. And this is the problem. When you go to these other platforms, the sales are going to be lackluster compared to eBay. And it's, it's going to be hard to stay motivated. And I'm telling you, you need to stay motherfucking motivated. You need to strike out and create some type of volume in these other channels. You have to do it because this is 2013. Let's, let's just look at it. The timing is not by accident. The next four months, November, December, January, February, will be huge for e-commerce. The day after Christmas is one of the largest shopping days online. Huge. Why are they getting rid of these people now when they know the gravy train is coming to make it better for the people they like? This isn't, this is, I'm going to tell you something. Um, I was playing around on eBay because, you know, just background. I still buy shit on eBay. And for those of you who like don't want a PayPal account, you'll need one. I buy stuff all the time, and then when I go to checkout, it's like, do you have a PayPal account? I'm like, yeah, but I'm not using it. And I go ahead and enter my credit card information and buy my item. I've been doing it for years. So you don't even need a PayPal account to pay someone who has a PayPal account. So I bought two things yesterday. And they were in the middle of the day. 
8 p.m., I got two shipping notices and tracking numbers. I was like, what the hell? You know, I'm not that crazy customer. Like, you know, I, hey, I didn't pay for expedited shipping. You know, I figure I'll get it, you know, Saturday, maybe Monday, right? Mm -mm. I'm getting my stuff, both of them, Friday. Because eBay has lit a fire on everybody. And part of customer service experience is the shipping. It is the biggest part. You do your listing right, the item is what it says. That's it. It's the next thing you can do is ship extremely fast. And that it's becoming mandatory. Extremely mandatory. And I was just sitting there like, and like I said, I've not stopped buying from you. eBay is a great place to buy. It may suck to sell there, but it's an awesome place to buy. I got, I'll even tell you what I bought. I got a watch. Make sure it's authentic. It's a, a name brand watch. And the guy didn't list it correctly. He didn't use the proper name. And I found it because that's how I searched. And I got this watch. And I I'm, I'm, probably won't keep it. But it is a Omega Speedmaster. It looks to be in good condition. I got this watch for $50. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, if it's not fake, you know, we'll find out. But I will turn around. And I could sell that to a friend of mine. I know for a thousand bucks. Just to let you know the fear that they're putting into people with eBay. And understand, you need, during this holiday season right now, you need to sit down with yourself and ask yourself, what would happen to me if eBay and Amazon disappeared? Because as one goes, the other will follow. Amazon, which is great, but the Amazon has a one major fuck up policy and you're gone too. They don't play. You get, hey, what, I mean, you get banned forever from the island. So, I, I mean, it, it doesn't take much. And the reason is there are so many people that will come and replace you on Amazon. But as eBay was, Amazon's going to start doing, I already see certain of the things. Like, as you know, I, I wrote a few books. I have some on Amazon. They're still on Amazon. I have some books still on Kindle. I have other books that I wrote and I'm using other platforms, totally different stuff. They're not on either platform because I, I follow what I preach. I seriously follow what I preach because dudes, dudes, heads, this is real. This is substantial. Reduction in force and then people like eBay has millions of sellers and they got rid of a few hundred thousand I'm gonna call bullshit on that They got rid of more than that. How do you know how many you they got rid of the number of sellers that they told you It's not like you can go on eBay and lift up the dress and look at the drawers You are only getting the information that they want you to have They could have got rid of a million people you would not know all eBay sellers are not on YouTube. All eBay sellers are not in Facebook groups. There's two groups of people in those places. Those who are really hungry and just starting and old heads. And then there's a big group in the middle. These folks just throw stuff on eBay here and there. And I'll bet you a lot of them didn't get rifted because their activity is so it's imperceptible. They got rid of people who were making money to pay the bills, to put food in their kid's mouth. I'm not going to be my regular asshole self and tell you these things. I'm going to give you some good advice. Going back, sit down tonight. Don't wait till this weekend tonight and start creating goals for yourself. Big goals, ambitious goals, because if you're selling on eBay and you're selling on Amazon and in my training, I recommend it. But I also say develop your own platform. It's hard, yes, it's hard, but I've been through it. I know what it's like to wake up and see 3,000 fucking listings gone. You know how much work it is to put up 3,000 listings? And then when they let you back in, they don't put your shit back up. You have to, if it wasn't for Ink Frog, we would have had to manually do that shit all over again. But with Ink Frog, we was able to hit it and relist. I mean, it's just like one of these moments. What? I mean, seriously, it, I mean, your heart start beating. You're like, what the, this has got me a mistake. I mean, seriously, it just, whoo, kahaka, like you're off with your head. 
And that happened to me, not once, not twice, but six times. A few times I didn't get like banned or kicked off. They just removed a bunch of listings. It's like, well, these listings violate. 2006, I said, fuck eBay. Did, you know, I have not directly listed on eBay since 2006. And a lot of people, you know, it's like, hey, what do you think about eBay? I can't advise you. I'm going to say join the eBay Facebook group or talk to someone who's doing eBay. I can tell you strategy from a management level. That's where I'm at. I can tell you how to put stuff together. I can tell you how to build a bigger infrastructure. I can tell you how to source more. Like, if you need information on how to list, you really are stupid. And I'm not being unkind because there's eBay for dummies. There, there's so many ways that you can get that information. Rudimentary, elementary, bullshit, basic eBay 101, free all day long, every day. There, there's no reason to ask those questions if you have a computer and you can use Google. So for those of you who want to have like a Amazon eBay business, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40, you know, that's what I would bring to you because you find items, you source it, you list it. But the whole deal is you have got to learn. And this is a matter of survival. I'm not trying to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And I'm not going to tell you, no, this is a glitch. This is a permanent part of eBay's plan and culture. Small sellers are not desired. It's a very hostile. And when I say small, that's 100K and under. You got people on eBay who are doing 100K a day. A day. So you are, if you're under 100K, a month, you're small potatoes. You're small potatoes. So anyone that's under 100,000, you're small potatoes and you're expendable. And this is the reason why. Say you have 500 sellers that do 10,000 a month. Okay? You've got one seller that does 3 million a week. You go, They're going to deal with that one seller because it's more organized. Because if you're doing 3 million a week, you got a warehouse, you have logistics, you have an organization. You cannot sell that much stuff without an organization, planning, strategy. You can't do it. I mean, we started having issues when we got to 2,000 items a month. I mean, we started having a lot of freaking issues. Have you ever packed up 100 packages that went off on a Sunday? It took us days. Because you can't put everything in just a box. Some items you have to make a box. Then you have to put it in another box. It takes time. To pack up 100 packages of various shapes and sizes. I mean, we thought we were going to die. So, understand. Then, you know, I can always look on uh, Facebook and I can see when someone has like a robust operation. Because when I see that thing hanging from the ceiling to let the peanuts in, then I see those U-line boxes. It means they're growing because you can't keep going to behind the liquor store getting boxes. You run to a point where you have to buy your package. When you get to a certain level, you have to buy it because you can't source it free. You can't source enough free. You just can't. So understand, you really, really need to evaluate your business. Today is October 29th. We, I did a video about this a few weeks ago. Go to your Facebook groups. You're going to start seeing people like, hey, they closed my account. It's October 29th. You will see more of those messages next month. There are people who have spent killer money getting ready for the Christmas season. They have warehouses full of inventory. Cross your fingers. Santa Claus may not be coming to your house this year. Seriously. I got a saying, don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. This is the deal. You have to have your own shit. I'm not going to say don't sell on eBay. I'm not going to say don't sell on Amazon. Like I said, I begrudgingly recommend it. But I am going to say if you do that, you need to be working just as hard on other avenues for you to generate income. Because those two can snap their fingers 
and rock your financial world. And if you were in some debt to get your inventory and this happens, can you say bankruptcy? I know someone recently um, was an Amazon FBA seller. His CD commingled inventory. Another hint, do not do commingled inventory if you're selling items that have high copyright issue potential. Don't do it. You know, one CD got a lawsuit. Amazon shut him down. And see, this is another thing. When you get that big and you have a certain way of doing stuff, it would be impossible for you to get like a second name because they're going to know who it is. Oh, he didn't get his inventory back. Yes, he didn't get his inventory back. So understand. And I'm going to even go a little further because this is going to be a separate video, but I'm going to talk about it. Because everyone's like, Glenn, Glenn, why aren't you a reseller? You know, if you're so good at reselling, how come you're not doing storage auctions, man? Why aren't you out there going to garage sales? Because I evolved. Where many of you are right now, I was there in 2000. 2000. It's 2013. I was there in 2000. Everybody that I know, and I'm... They, that really take this thing seriously evolve and they get past it. There are people who have outgrown Amazon FBA. There's uh, one guy I know, he never even went Amazon FBA. He created his own fulfillment deal because of the price points and he got a better deal financially. I created my own fulfillment when I went out and got four eBay sellers to sell a lot of stuff. You evolve. If you were still, if you were five years ago, going to garage sales, going to flea markets, and the day is five years now, and you were wondering, how come I'm not making any more money? You haven't evolved. Everybody that I know is good evolves. Redneck Picker, we had this conversation maybe three years ago. He evolved. He went to bigger and better stuff. That's what you do when you take this shit serious. If you take it serious, you will get serious money. Everybody, the castle and that, everybody that's doing well and able to make a living doing this type of stuff evolved. You have to. So understand, if you are not aggressively growing your online business, you are in trouble. Someone else will come and take your milk and cookies. And you'll go downstairs and look at an empty glass and an empty plate and see some crumbs and wonder what the fuck happened. That's the world we live in. It's not going to change. It's going to get worse. So take my advice. Get your stuff together. If you're eBay top heavy and eBay top heavy is if 50% of your income is coming from eBay, you are eBay top heavy. If you've got three selling channels, try to do 33 and a third from each one. If you have four, try to do 25% from each one. That's called diversification. It's safer and it protects your money and it protects your sanity. I'm serious. It's like, you know, if you're eBay top heavy, you're like that football team that can only throw and can't run. The defense doesn't have to prepare for anything else and they can just skin back their, peel back their ears and come after the quarterback on every play. Virtually, you're a sitting duck. So take my words, take my advice, work hard, and get yourself some other online, accent, ac online assets, activities, things that you can make money because this whole thing is serious. Every year, you see major corporations laying off people. Ebay's laying off business people because understand with eBay you just create yourself a job You don't have a real business unless you're doing eBay and you have your own separate website If you're doing eBay only you do not have your own business. You're an indentured servant A contractor Contractor sounds more sounds more kind, but the whole deal is you're not in control. They're not your customers. They're eBay's customers and If you ever forget that it will cost you they're not Amazon, they're, they're not your customers, they're Amazon's customers. And both of those, par, those uh, enterprises, those platforms, are doing everything they can to protect their customer base. And I'm not mad at them because they built it. What I'm telling you to do is build your own thing. 
I don't care if it's painting grasshoppers. I don't care if it's licking pig lips. Whatever you need to do to get some scratch coming in from another source. I don't care if it's just 50 bucks to begin with. Do it. Build it. 50 bucks one month. 100 bucks the next month. This time next year is two or three grand. Doesn't happen overnight, people. But find something. I'm, I'm like, I'm saying, I'm on the soapbox. Do this. We just saw it. It's, it's going to happen again. This is a continuation. They are, what was that movie? What was that? Uh, Stargate Atlantis. And when the, uh, these things came and did the culling, you know, if you're out there in the field, oh, shoot. They just took your ass up and sucked your life's force out of your body. That's what's going on. So if you're out there on the fields running around, when they come, you'll be looking like an old man in 30 seconds, all dried up and shriveled. But all jokes aside, take my advice. Seriously, work on your own platforms, work on your own things, and reduce your dependence upon eBay and Amazon. I have other books under a pen name, and no, I'm not telling you my pen name because I'm trying to grow that business independently of Glendon Cameron. You know, I'm trying to prove something to myself. It's like, you know, if you're a writer, you should be able to write anything, and I have no problem if it takes 10 years for that name to do whatever. I have no problem with that because it's moving nicely. I like the way it's going. I follow my own freaking advice because I've been where you are living every night. I put in the group the other few weeks ago. I could go on Amazon, FBA, eBay. Well, what I know, I can get up to seven figures in less than three years, maybe two, maybe sooner. And I couldn't sleep at night. Because the thing is, when you start making money like that, you become accustomed to making money like that. You start doing things you normally didn't do to keep that going. You start changing. That saying, luxuries once tasted become necessities. And then you, all of a sudden, you're just like doing whatever you can to keep your indentured servitude going. We live in a time where you can create a product in your head. Go on Kickstarter and convince enough people to give you money to build it and they'll buy it later. I, I'm sorry. That makes me fucking excited. When I, I, do, do you understand what you can do now? Do not limit yourself. What I'm saying, do not limit yourself. Oh, I'm just a reseller. No, you're a person with ambitions, dreams. There's so many things you can do. I had a friend who was crazy about dominoes, and she wrote a book, and I said, write a book about dominoes. That book made more money, and it only took her like a week to write than her other books that took her a year. Do something different. Explore you. Reach out, and uh, for those, you know, Hustler University, baby, where your real education begins. Uh, I'm going more toward, you know, I'll just tell you, like if you're looking for eBay stuff, Craigslist stuff, um, some of it's there. But from the rest of the year, 2014, I am going strictly producer, creator, how to build products, how to create stuff. Because I create my own products. I create and my profit margins when I create a product are insane compared to buying and reselling. They're insane. And I've been there. I bought a safe for a dollar, made $62,000 in six months. I know what it is to spend a dollar and make large money, more so than most other people. But Hustler University will be more about becoming a creator, becoming a producer, building stuff. Uh, there's so many things that I have set for 2014. So if you want to get in, you need to get in now because Ask Ed Evans, I will raise the price on your ass in a heartbeat. And I will, because I'm a capitalist. I believe in making money. And I read that book, Predictably Irrational, by Dan Early. You, you know, this was actually going on in the forum today. People are not price buyers. Every decision that you make to buy something comes from an emotional basis. It, to buy is an emotional. To not buy to emotional. To buy cheap is an emo It's some type of emotional component to your buying decision. And you, many of you are totally unaware of it. But that's this video. Take heed. Take action. Protect your tender chestnuts as they roast on this holiday fire. Because understand, some of you are going to get rifted in this eBay thing.
Yes, some of you, it's gonna happen today and the next few weeks or before Christmas. Mark my words on it. And you're gonna be like, dang, Suntan Superman told me. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.